Welcome to Guns and Gear Network, everyone. Wanted to bring you a little video this afternoon <coughs> about food procurement in a survival situation. And uh, what you're looking at here is they're called catch and release live traps. Now, as of today, I went and looked um, on the internet to see what these cost. These come from Tractor Supply. They are $25 for the pair. They come in a uh, a group here of, of uh, two in a package and they're $25 for both of them that's dirt cheap guys uh, $25 for two traps that's a really good price and um, so let's talk about food procurement in the wild um, grids down uh, transportation has basically stopped not a lot of food coming in you're going to need uh, you know you don't want to go through all your preps you want to supplement with some uh, wild animals now this right here is just another method um, besides hunting, fishing, trapping, all those things, uh, wild edibles, whatever. You want every opportunity you can to catch something that you could possibly eat. Now, the good thing about catching with live animals is I can keep, live animals do not spoil. So if it's in the summertime and we've got an issue of spoilage, obviously live animals do not um, spoil so we can keep them uh, alive for two or three days until you need them. So what would you catch in traps like this? Um, these are obviously smaller traps, so you're looking at basically, um, and I hate to use uh, this one, but rodents, um, squirrels, possibly uh, rabbits, um, raccoons, possums, and it, like I said, it depends on your area too. You may have, um, if you live in like Louisiana, uh, there may be some other uh, uh, animals that are not uh, here in the, uh, uh, where I'm at, like in Texas, you may have um, armadillos, so forth. So it just depends on your area, but anything small that can fit in the trap, you should be able to um, trap them. So how these work, and I'm going to demonstrate how they work, but uh, let's, let's use this example. You went out fishing, caught you a mess of fish, and you have the uh, entrails left over. You don't waste anything. So these entrails could be used as bait um, for a trap like this. So you have to have some bait um, to get them to come in, and that could be fruits, vegetables, you know, leftovers, uh, you know, spoiled food, any like that. And obviously certain things are going to attract certain people, certain animals. You're not going to attract a rabbit with uh, fish entrails. So you're going to then attract possums and raccoons and stuff like that. So you keep in mind your bait is going to determine what you attract. These uh, uh, come from Tractor Supply. They're $25 for the pair. They are fairly well built, to be honest with you. They're uh, a green in color. It's hard to pick that up on the camera, maybe. But they have like a, uh, they're either painted or they have some type of coating. I think it's a paint. Uh, so they're fairly rust proof. Um, even with moderate rust, they should last you for years. And uh, I'm going to demonstrate with the smaller one here. Let me set my camera up a little taller. And I'm going to demonstrate how these you would set one of these up in uh, and use it. So normally, I find something a little disposable dish of some sort to put my bait in. You don't have to do that, but a lot of times I do. And then what you do is, if you look over here on the side, you have the door. And then you have this mechanism here, and this is the trigger mechanism. And how this works is if you look on the front here, there's a bar that locks. You have to push it forward, get the door started, going in the up position, and you push it up. All right, so what you want to make sure of, though, this trigger mechanism is underneath your door. So it'll go, it'll go just like that. So that'll go underneath, and then back here let me get my camera in the position all right so then this right here is the part that they would step on and it comes up and down there's a little hollow piece in this end that you would take this bar line it up and stick it in now some people I saw some of the reviews people were complaining 
that it took so many pounds of pressure to set off the trap. Here's the deal. You can set this more sensitive. If I push this up further into that section here, yes, it is much harder to push down. If I barely put it in, it doesn't take much pressure at all to push it down. So you can adjust that tension merely by not putting that all the way in. So some people, I think this was user error on the reviews when they were complaining about how much it took to uh, make the pressure plate release. So this is uh, that situation. Normally what I do is I'll go ahead and take my, before I set this up uh, and set the trap itself, I'll take my bowl and go ahead and put it in here so there's no accidental this uh, setting off the trap but if your arms long enough you can go past this plate let me get my little there's a plate right here this little metal plate you'll go past that and you want to set this all the way back like that and then here's the plate now normally what I'll do uh, it depends on what you're trying to catch some animals are a little more um, spooky than others they, they get a little they're a little uh, cautious if you will so there's all kinds of tricks you can do. You could literally take a bunch of limbs and leaves and put over the top of this and kind of disguise what it is. You could, um, and it also depends on where you're trapping. You also want to look if there's been activity um, in that area, such as um, footprints. So if you've got uh, raccoon prints and tracks and stuff like that, then there's a good area that there's a good chance that they're in that area. So what happens is, um, like I said, you can you can disguise this camouflage in any way you choose um, with uh, with foliage and stuff like that. So they would actually come up and they would start in the door. And what happens is, if you notice, if their front feet hits this, for their head to get to this, what's going to happen? And we'll watch this. I'll try getting it all into camera. If we watch the door shut now they're trapped inside that's how this works so it also if you look on top here it's got metal right here and that's to protect your hands and be keep in mind guys um wild animals can get pretty pretty wild and you know even the smallest animal raccoons um possums so forth can injure you so you have a couple choices be very careful handling them if you're going to try keeping them alive for any length of time even in the cage because they can reach through that and bite through or you know get their mouth or whatever where if you would put your finger along the edge they could get to it and claw you and so forth you also need to make sure that the animal is healthy and you don't see any signs of uh, possibly rabies or anything like that by simple observation I would research animal behaviors as far as rabies and, and that sort of thing, and, and I would keep them um, alive for X amount of days to kind of keep an eye on them. Uh, if not, you can kill them pretty much immediately. Obviously, you're, you can dispatch the animal. What I would recommend is not taking them out of the trap. I would set the trap up and then take you a, um, a 22 rifle or so forth and dispatch the animal. Now, with all this said, let me give some caveats to all this. Um, if you don't have the proper license, proper a lot of things in certain states and, and their seasons and trapping license and all that, doing this during normal times is highly illegal. You can be fined big fines and, and all that. So keep that in mind, guys. Um, nuisance animals is a different story. If you're trying to get nuis rid of nuisance animals, say in a backyard, uh, whether that be uh, feral or domestic, uh, any of that type, wild animals, then that's one thing. You have to check your local and state laws as far as do I need a special permit uh, even for that. But under a uh, crap hits the fan, I'm starving to death, bets are off. I don't care. You know, there's nobody going to be out um, writing tickets probably for uh, any of that. So, you know, but this is just one more tool in your toolbox. Um, it'll also help. Let's say you've got a uh, nuisance animal that's getting into your preps, your food. This is another way to possibly catch them. Um, so keep that in mind. You can use it not only for that, but also to procure food. 
But anyway, guys, I just wanted to bring you this short video. Um, I think these are just another tool in the toolbox. They're not very expensive. Go, you know, to um, Tractor Supply or somewhere like that. Like I said, these, as of today on their website, were $25 for the pair, which is a good deal in my opinion. The big trap uh, works exactly like the little trap um, as far as how it's set up and the door mechanism and all that. So that's just a smaller version of the one I showed you and how it works. Um, again, you don't have to use the... Um, bowl i like using the bowl but you don't have to uh, you can literally just put your bait there uh, i like putting it in something because a lot of times uh, raccoons especially are very smart animals and they will figure out okay if i they don't have to go in it they can just reach in and maybe pull it out and not even go in the uh, the door portion uh, section that you're wanting them to go in and it can be frustrating at times <laughs> with these would i go and depend solely on these only for food procurement absolutely not that's why i say it's just one more tool in the toolbox uh, for food procurement i can you know set up two of these every night and see what happens uh, but i'm also out maybe possibly hunting fishing getting wild edibles all that so it's just one more thing guys to help you um again talking about nuisance or rodents uh, animals that are causing problems let's say you have a garden and you've got uh, raccoons and stuff coming in at night this right here will help you not only trap some meat but also uh, also keep them from damaging gardens and and stuff like that that you may have herbs or whatever so again just one more tool in the toolbox uh, for your food procurement that i wanted to bring to you these right here are the easiest for most people to operate when you get into actual leg holds and uh, those type traps those are a little more difficult and uh, probably a, another level but most any common anybody could do one of these traps and, and be uh, uh, somewhat successful with it believe it or not um, these are here i've used them for quite a number of years and used these uh, even growing up as a kid um whatever and and we've designed also look on the internet guys and I'll, i may uh, do some of this later um there's also tons of information out about um building traps uh specific like rabbit box traps and stuff like that there's all kinds and i used to build them as kids and have fun with stuff like that but um always look and there's you know other videos or not video well videos too but you can also look about snare traps and leg traps and uh conner bear traps and you know all that if you want to research on that again it's just one more tool in the toolbox because if you think about it it's just like fishing Am I, is my likelihood of success better with one hook in the water or five hooks in the water? So my um, probability of success with food procurement is going to be better if, I've, if I set these every night while I'm sleeping. They're kind of working for me. I'm not doing a whole lot. Then I'm going out first thing in the morning catching some fish or you know trying to find um, a meat source through hunting methods that sort of thing and uh, but anyway guys i'm going to keep bringing you a few of these videos about um, food procurement and different uh, type things that i think you need to add uh, in your preps but this right here is one i wanted to bring you today as always like share and subscribe if you like our videos give us a thumbs up that's always helpful share our videos uh, with other media sources that's always helpful appreciate that if you give us a thumbs down we don't mind uh, if you would just give us a little critique about why you gave us a thumb down so we can hopefully improve our videos as we go as people uh, give us uh, some constructive criticism we always like to hear that if you've got direct experience about any of these products or something you think we misspoke about uh, obviously share your knowledge and uh, what you think we misspoke about that we'd like to correct and make sure we're getting out accurate information again guys we're just basing most of this on our experience and so forth and uh, would like uh, make sure we're getting out accurate information as always like share and subscribe we'll be bringing you another video here in the near future thanks guys and have a great day